physically fit. They're 19 to 25. Almost everyone is a male. And they look like fighting age. I think they're building an army. They're 29,000 people over the last... I think they're building... They want to get us from within. I think they're building an army. This is not... You know, it's interesting. Did you see them? They all have tents. They all have gas-fired stoves. I mean, this is not like an illegal immigrant. This is... They're building something. They have something in mind. We're going to end all of that stuff. They respected your president. They respected our country. And we're not going to let people, we are not going to let these people come in and take our city away from us and take our country away from us. It's not going to happen. Now, who would let people, seriously, who would let people come from prisons and jails, from mental institutions? They cannot stay. We will immediately begin the largest criminal deportation operation in our country's history because this situation is sustainable by no country. No country can sustain this. As we speak, there are hundreds of thousands of Biden migrants invading our city and our country. We no longer have border states like Texas and Arizona. All states, including New York, are your border state. The people are pouring through Texas. They are pouring through Arizona. They are pouring through every state. Every state is now a border state. Every state is now, we're talking about, in my opinion, 16 to 17 million people. And these are not necessarily people that are going to help us as a country. We want to be nice. We want to be respectful. They're coming from so many places. We don't have any idea. In many cases, we don't even know what the language. You know, you have languages that people don't even know about. We have languages where there's nobody in our country that speaks these languages. They're coming from places we have no idea what's happening with our country. The flood of migrants is putting crippling burdens on our communities, your schools, hospitals, parks, and public resources. Frankly, we're lucky to get this big park. I don't know how the hell we did it. It must be New York's finest. I don't know how we did it. They call it the Biden migrant invasion, and it's wrong. It's immoral. And the vast majority of New Yorkers agree with me that this is unacceptable. We, it's unacceptable. We must stop it. We must stop it immediately. And you know, for the people coming up, it's also unacceptable. They come up in what's called caravans. The women are treated horribly. They're being raped at levels that nobody's ever seen before. Nobody wants to talk about it. The fake news will report that. Oh, it's so terrible what he said. But it's, it's fact. It's fact. The people are being treated. They're coming up in 100 degrees, and then it's freezing. They're coming through snake-infested areas. It's a hell of a journey, and so many people are dying coming up. If we told them, please do not come up, you're not going to come in. Like I was telling them for a long period of time, they wouldn't come. They're being offered, look at California Governor Newsom. Governor Newsom. He offers education. He offers medical care. He offers pensions. He offers everything. He'll even give them an electric car because they're all over the place. How about the electric mandate? you like the all-electric mandate? Not too much. Huh? Does anybody like a car that doesn't go very far? Of course, a lot. In Brooklyn, American students at James Madison High School were recently told they had to stay at home from school so their classrooms could be turned into housing for thousands of, right? Thousands of migrants. Very simply, Joe Biden puts illegal aliens first. I put America first. I put America first. Would anybody, now this is up to you, has anybody heard the snake? Would anybody like to hear the snake? Because we can stay here all night, I don't care. Would you like to hear the snake? So it's a metaphor, it's an old song and it was redone. It didn't have anything to do with snakes or people or illegal immigration, but this has to do with illegal immigration. And I think it's very accurate actually, and it's very sad, but I'll go and we'll do it. And some of you have heard it and many of you haven't, but we're gonna do it right now for the great people of the Bronx and elsewhere. We love the Bronx. We love the Bronx. Are you ready? On her work, and, and you know what? You know what this is all about, right? Did you know? You've heard this before? Have you heard it? We got the greatest people here. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, he said. I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Take me in, oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by the fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Right? 
So when we allow people from prisons, when we allow people from insane asylums and mental institutions, which are being emptied out all over the world, you know, their prison populations are going way down. You know why? Because they're being dumped into the United States. When we are allowing terrorists at numbers that we've never seen before, remember the snake. Remember the snake. Because you're going to get bitten like you never got bitten before, and you need a new president, and you have to get rid of this person who is not a smart person, not a respected person, and doesn't have a clue what the hell is happening. So, that's the snake. Did you enjoy the snake? On day one, I will seal the border and I will stop the invasion of our country. Very sadly, in recent years, we have also seen our city destroyed by bad, radical left, pro-crime policy that virtually everyone, Republican, Democrat, Independent, everyone, you all know it's a disaster. You know the names of these lunatic policies. No cash bail. Somebody kill somebody. Go out. No bail. We don't worry. Go out and kill a couple of more people. Defund our great police. Defund the police. Sanctuary cities. Release violent repeat offenders from jail. Joe Biden supports all of this insanity and much more, but millions of people across New York know it's crazy. There is no way when you watch this guy get off an airplane, he doesn't even have to talk. When he falls out of a helicopter, he's got three little stairs. It's not that hard. You got two railings. You don't fall out of helicopters. You don't fall upstairs. He falls up. He has more trouble going up than he does coming down. That's a little sick. But you're just not going to vote for him. You just not. We got to win. If we just win the state. It just puts it right. It's such a big state. It puts it to bed. You're going to have a president and people. You're going to have a president that understands what we have to do. We have to be nice about it, but we have to do things. And we're going to be done. And the world is going to respect us again. We were never so respected as we were four years ago. President Xi of China, Putin, you know, uh, Viktor Orban. Did you ever hear of him? Prime Minister of Hungary. Very tough guy. Known as a strong man. Oh, they hate it when I talk about him because they say he's a strong man. Trump loves strong men. I don't know. I like weak men. Actually, I like weak men. I'd much rather have a weak man than a strong man. But he is a strong man. And they asked him, why is it that the whole world is blowing up? He said, one simple reason. Trump is not president in the United States. He said, you put Trump back as president and the whole world is going to get better because they were afraid of Trump. They couldn't figure Trump out. Trump was a rather difficult person. But he used the word afraid. I don't use it. I don't use afraid. I use the word respect. They respected your president. They respected the United States of America. And they're going to do it again. And it's going to happen fast. But we have to get this absolute disaster. The worst president in history. He makes Jimmy Carter look like he had a brilliant administration. It's the only thing. The only happy person about Joe Biden is Jimmy Carter because Jimmy looks brilliant by comparison. I also want to thank New York's finest. I grew up with them. I know them. I love them. I love our firemen. I love our teachers. These are incredible people. And we have to bring the word respect and honor back to them right where it belongs. A few weeks ago, I visited with a grieving family, New York police officer, Jonathan Diller. What a beautiful family. He was a beautiful person. He was 31 years old, gunned down during a traffic stop by a vicious thug and uh, just, uh, just horrible, leaving his beautiful young wife behind, a son, Ryan, behind, one-year-old son. And it was the saddest day. It was a horrible thing. Opened the door and just started shooting him. The criminal charge was savagely murdering Officer Dillard, was previously arrested by the NYPD 21 times. And he was allowed to go out because of the political things they do here. I'm the only one they want to keep. If I ever said, I want no bail, they'd say, you got to pay a fortune. If I ever say, oh, no cash bail, that sounds good, that sounds good. No, it doesn't apply to Trump. I'm the only one it doesn't apply to, probably. And the accomplice driving the car had been arrested 14 times and was actually a far more violent person. And his nickname was Killer. They called him Killer. These dangerous and violent repeat offenders should never have been on our streets. Jonathan should be alive today, but they were released again and again and again. I will not sit by and accept this reckless insanity when I am in the White House. I will stand up to the Marxist DAs and Soros prosecutors, and we will tell them, no more, we're not going to stand for it. We will not let them destroy our communities. We will not let them destroy our country. There's a 53% increase in felony assaults on your subways. 53%, that's in a short period of time. Since 2019, murders are up more than 20%. Shootings are up more than 30%. I'm going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong actions on crime. And remember, black, Hispanic, Asian people need this protection and safety more than anyone else. Don't ever forget it. And after years of talk by the radical left Democrats, we are going to give them the protection they need and we're going to protect our police. We're going to make sure they do a great job. They can do it very quickly. They know who the bad guys are. They know everything about them. They know their name. They know their middle initial. We're going to insist that if a violent criminal murders a police officer, they receive the death penalty. It's going to be quick. And I also want to work with your mayor and your governor, happen to be Democrats, to clean up the homeless encampments so that you can once again enjoy your parks and your public spaces. Right now, you don't have public spaces. They're occupied by migrants and tents. Pleasures as simple as a walk in the park or watching your children again play in a Little League game will come roaring back and they're going to come back very quickly. Your lifestyle and the American dream will be with you once again. We're going to bring it back, the American dream. You don't have an American dream right now. 
You will be proud and your children and your country will be even prouder of you. Years ago, people with severe mental illness were in mental institutions. And then a certain governor, I won't mention the name because at this point, what difference? They dumped all of them into the streets because they said those institutions were too expensive to run. So now they live on our streets and that's what we have. This is no good for anybody. It's bad for the people who need help and it's bad for the people of our city. And it's a horrible, horrible way to live. I want to work in partnership with your local leaders, Democrats, pretty much all, and move the severely mentally ill off your streets and back into a place where they can get help and the help that they desperately need. I want to recognize, by the way, a few very special people. You have some really great people here. And I'm sorry I can't mention all. We have congressmen all over the place. But I just can't mention you today. You're never going to speak to me. But we, would anybody like to hear these congressmen's names? I but I do have to mention a few people. We're truly honored to be joined by a man who is a Democrat and a former member of the New York City Council. And he's been a friend of mine and he helped me very much with the Ferry Point Project and getting it working and did a really good job. Ruben Diaz Sr. Come on up, Ruben. Good. Thank you. Mr. President, I am a Puerto Rican, a black Puerto Rican. I used to be a U.S. state senator for 15 years. I used to be a city council member. Today I'm here for various reasons. But I want to tell you first that as a Puerto Rican, as a Hispanic, I want to apologize to you for the conduct of George, or, or George Juan Merchant. As a Hispanic, I want to apologize. He's, he's been used. He has been used to destroy you. But we know better than that. We know better than that. As a minister, president of the New York Hispanic Clergy Organization, I want to tell AOC. This morning, she intended to become a prophet. And she said, even God doesn't want Trump in the Bronx because it's going to rain. Madame Prophet AOC, you have become a, a false prophet. Look, look at what a beautiful day. That means that not only you guys want Trump in the Bronx because, because if we're going to measure that for the weather, then I will say humbly, that even God wants you in the Bronx. And I want, and I want, I want to close by saying, I want to close by saying, Mr. President, I want to join you in having the Bronx great again. Please accept this Democrat this black Puerto Rican with a kinky hair and a broken English, please accept my endorsement for you as a president. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. That, how nice was that? I didn't expect that. Really? That was beautiful. You know, it's always dangerous to do that. You never know what's going to come out. Maybe he'll change his mind coming up, but he doesn't change his mind. That man is a winner. He's a winner and a great man. Thank you very much, Ruben. Also with us is New York native and current U.S. congressman. He's hot as a pistol. Oh, boy, he has a future. And he's a great friend of mine, Byron Donalds. Come up, please. Wow. Mr. President. There's more of them here now than when I was up about an hour and a half ago. If there's one thing we know is that this man was one of the best presidents this country has ever had. And if there's another thing that we know is that all of you are going to make him the 47th president of the United States. Thank you, Byron. Great. What a good future. Here as well is rapper Chef G. Does everybody know Chef? Where is Chef G? Where is he? Come on up, fellas. Rapper Sleepy Hollow. Come on up here, fellas. How are you, man? Hey. Oh, you know, oh I like that. I want to get that done. <laughs> President Trump, please, please. One thing, one thing I want to say. 
One thing I want to say, they always gonna whisper your accomplishments and shout your failures. Trump gonna shout the wins for all of us. Make America great again. Thank you very much. That's where I like those teeth. I want to find out where you did. I got to get my teeth like that. I want that to happen to me. As somebody with a fantastic future of the Republican Party and beyond, Gavin Wax. Thank you, young Republicans. Gavin, wherever you are. Thank you, Gavin. Adam Solis of New York, young Republicans, who's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job you're doing. Madeline Brame of Blexit. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you very much. Somebody that's a real star in politics and has done an incredible job and so popular in Nassau County, the county executive of Nassau County, Bruce Blakeman. Come up, Bruce, for a second. Come up, Bruce. Where is Bruce? We got to get Bruce. Where is he? That's a long way to come up to hell with Bruce, right? Come on up, Bruce. Come on. This guy is central casting. If I'm doing a movie on a politician, this is the guy I have playing. Come on. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Both my parents were World War II veterans. Not many people can say about that. They would be shocked and appalled by what's going on in this foreign invasion from our southern border. Nassau County is not a sanctuary county. And when Donald Trump gets reelected, this will not be a sanctuary country. God bless America. Good man, good man. Thank you very much. National Committeeman and Chairman Joe Cairo. Joe, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And Andrew, thank you very much for being here, star, star of the future. I heard you made a good speech. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. We have so many people out there, but we're not, we're going to finish this up. This has been, I didn't know. I woke up, I said, I wonder, will it be hostile or will it be friendly? It was beyond friendly. It was a love fest. From the very first day that we take back the White House, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. We're going to restore peace through strength. We're going to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of our country. We're going to protect our great seniors, and I will never let anyone touch your Medicare or your Social Security. Under the Democrat program, they will be gone. We are going to restore free speech in America. We are going to fight for your right to school choice, something you all want. And I will not allow schools to impose COVID vaccine mandates or mask mandates. We are going to get far-left Marxist lunacy out of our children's classrooms. We're going to keep men out of women's sports. And we will, once and for all, secure our elections. But all of this, saving New York and saving America, starts with telling crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in history, you're fired like the apparent. You're fired. Get out. You were terrible. You destroyed. You're destroying our country, Joe. Get out. If you want to help, you must vote. I believe that we can win New York State. We have levels of we have levels of support that nobody's seen before. I mean, look at this. So register, volunteer, turn out everyone you know. Don't assume it doesn't matter just because you live in a blue city. You live in a blue city, but it's going red very, very quickly. We must work together as a team to win. New York has always been the home of proud patriots like you. You are proud patriots. You love this. You love this city. You love this state, and you love our country. New York was the city loved by Teddy Roosevelt, Norman Rockwell, the great Flo Ziegfeld. General Douglas MacArthur, George Gershwin, Frank Sinatra, and in baseball alone, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, Jackie Robinson, and many, many others. It's a city where workers and skilled craftsmen strode across steel beams 80 stories high to build the great Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building and all of the others. It's the city that lit up the shining lights of Broadway that turned Times Square from a seedy, dirty, long-forgotten area into one of the greatest crossroads of light and glamour anywhere in the world. It's the city that produced generations of everyday American heroes who willingly spilled their blood and gave everything they had to make America into the greatest nation in the history of the world. Above all, this is the place that every one of us here today has been proud to call our home, our town, our city. And we are the ones who are going to make our city great again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this city, and it is hardworking patriots, like, and this is something, you can say it, and you can say it a million times, and you can emblazon it. It's hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. You are going to save our country. We're gonna get out and vote like